Hello everyone, welcome to the seventh lecture of heat transfer. This lecture is related to temperature distribution through plane wall and the boundary condition. As we have, as we have already discussed about the general heat conduction equation. In lecture 6, we have already discussed the general heat conduction equation which is given below. This is the general heat conduction equation in three dimension in x direction, in y direction, and z direction. This is the uh, heat generation rate and this is the heat storage rate. Now, in this lecture, we will discuss that how temperature distribute through a plane wall. The, uh, so, we will simplify this equation and we will get the temperature distribution through the plane wall. If the heat, now we, can, now we will simplify this equation to get temperature distribution through plane wall. So, there will be some, we will cancel some term from this equation and we will simplify this equation. So, if the heat is transferred only in x direction and there is no heat generation in the system, then at steady state equation when will become, if there is no, will become, so if there is no heat generation, then this term will become zero and at steady state this term will also become zero and if the heat transfer only in x direction so and there is no heat transfer in the y direction then this term will become zero and if there is no heat transfer in z direction then this term will be also become zero so we simplify this equation and we left only and only one term we obtain only one term so this is the simplified form of the above equation which is partial by partial x and 2k partial t by partial x is equal to zero this is equation number two now if thermal conductivity of material is constant then equation two will become this thermal conductivity will come out from this uh, from this bracket and we will obtain this equation now this is the equation number three uh, it is for uh, heat transfer only in x direction as temperature changes in only temperature changes only in x direction now uh, this uh, can be simplified further partial square t by partial x square is equal to zero now in order to find the temperature distribution we will use this equation number three this is equation number three so this is the equation number three now uh, we can simplify this equation uh, uh, suppose uh, d partial x multiply by zero uh, it will become zero and then integrate this equation and we integrate this equation Suppose we integrate this equation, we integrate this equation, so we will get uh, the integration of 0, as we know uh, the integration of 0 is constant which is C1 and when we integrate this term we obtain this result. O. So as we know that the temperature uh, changes only in x direction, o. so we, uh, we will, we will, uh, we will uh, use only ordinary differential equation. O. So, uh, in this case, if temperature transfer, uh, changes only in one direction, then we will use the ordinary differential equation, which is dt by dxo, the is equal to c1. The partial term in this case will become zero. Now, uh, suppose if temperature changes in three direction, uh, if temperature is a function of x, y, and z, then we will, suppose temperature is a function of, this is temperature, if temperature is a function of x, y, and z direction, then in that case we will use partial differential equation o. but in this case the temperature only changes in x direction so we use the ordinary differential equation which is dt by dx is equal to c1 now integrate this equation we will get t we will get temperature distribution o. this is the linear equation o, which show the temperature is a function of x o this is a constant c1 is and c2 are constant o. now these c1 and c2 can be obtained from the boundary condition o. This equation is a linear equation. This the its physical meaning is uh, this is the this equation show that suppose this is uh, this is a surface T S one. This is the temperature of surface one, and suppose this is temperature of the surface T S two of the surface two. Suppose temperature changes. Uh, this is the hot fluid. Suppose there is a hot fluid, and there is some cold fluid. And the heat transfer from this hot fluid to the cold fluid so the temperature distribution will like this this is the this is the temperature distribution and it, it is a linear it is a linear relation so this relation is a, is shown by this 
equation number four just show that temperature suppose this is the x direction and this is the temperature this is the this is x and this is the temperature this is the thickness of the wall and in y direction we consider temperature so temperature is a function of only x direction now in order to find c1 and c2 we use boundary condition now the boundary condition is at x is equal to 0 t is equal to temperature of the surface so suppose this is x is equal to 0 let us consider this is a plane wall and this is the temperature of the surface 1 this is temperature of the surface 2 and this is the x direction and this is the y direction now at x is equal to 0 the temperature is temperature of the surface 1 suppose this is the temperature distribution so at x is equal to 0 temperature is equal to temperature of surface 1 which is ts1 and at x is equal to l at x is suppose this is the suppose this point is l so at x is equal to l temperature is is equal to temperature of surface 2 which is ts2 now we will use these two condition at x is equal to 0, 0 temperature is equal to temperature of surface 1 at x is equal to l temperature is equal to temperature of surface 2 so at x is equal to 0 this equation equation number 4 become become t is equal to c2 which is equal to temperature t t temperature of surface 1 now at x is equal to l we put uh, l in this equation so t is equal to c1 l plus c2 as we already know that c2 is equal to temperature of surface 1 so we put t s1 in place of c2 so rearrange this equation this equation we will get c1 is equal to temperature of surface 2 minus temperature of surface 1 divided by length of the wall this is the thickness r l length of the wall now we know that uh, we now putting the value of c1 c2 in equation number 4 this is the uh, c1 c1 we have already this is c1 and this is the c2 which is ts1 now putting c1 and c2 in equation number 4 this is equation number 4 which is a linear relation between temperature and length of the wall so um, we put c1 the value of c1 is T, uh, ts2 minus ts1 divided by l and the value of c2 is ts1 now putting the value we will get the temperature distribution in the wall now in order to find the heat rate and flux through the wall we will use Fourier law as we know that Fourier law is qx is equal to minus ka dt by dxo now differentiate this equation with respect to xo we will get dt by dx is equal to d by dx and to ts2 minus ts1 divided by ln2 so plus differentiate this also with respect to xo as ts1 is the surface temperature is the temperature of surface 1 which is constant so this term become 0 and we, and we get dt by dx which is t, uh, temperature of surface 2 minus temperature of surface 1 divided by lo now as we know that qx is equal to ka dt by dx so dt by dx is given the value of dt by dx is this is the value of dt by dx now put this value in in place of dt by dx so and multiply by k and to area so we will get uh, heat heat transfer in x direction so to simplify this term we will get uh, k ts1 minus ts2 into area cross sectional area power heat transfer divided by length or thickness of the wall so finally we get qx is equal to ka ts1 minus ts2 divided by l this equation there is no x term in this equation so this equation show that the heat rate is not a function of xo similarly as we know that the heat flux is equal to heat rate divided by area so the heat flux from heat flux suppose this is the heat flux which is equal to suppose this is this is the heat rate of equation so uh, heat flux divided by heat so sorry so the heat rate divided by area is the heat flux which is equal to k and to temperature of surface 1 minus temperature of surface 2 divided by length or thickness of the wall 
these two this equation suppose this is equation number a and this is equation number b these two equations show that heat rate or heat flux is not a function of length or thickness of the material oh. there is a constant heat rate or constant and constant heat flux flow through the wall and as we uh, as we as we uh, have already discussed this the temperature changes in x direction but heat rate and heat flux are constant through the wall so this is the temperature distribution through the plane wall and this is this the, this is the heat rate through the wall and this is the heat rate through the wall and this equation show the heat flux through the wall if you are new to my channel please like and subscribe thanks